Don't you know that I know I've been changed? You know the angels in heaven that sign my name. You know that I know I've been changed. Don't you know that I? Don't you know that I know I've been changed? Don't you know the angels in heaven done sign my name? You know that I know I've been changed. Tell me now that I. Don't you know that I, I know I've been changed? You know the angels in heaven done sign my name. Hum now. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that I sing it now? I know I've been changed. If God's been good to you, oh, you can't help but know I've been changed. You know the angels in heaven, the sign my name. If you've been his child, oh, I know I've been changed. You can't help. I, I know I've been changed. Don't you know that I, I know I've been changed? Do you know the angels in heaven done sign my name? You know the angels in heaven done sign my name you know the angels in heaven done does the angels in heaven done sign my name question then is is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If not, then what a great day it is. What a blessed opportunity it is to write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. God has certainly been good to us. For that, we're grateful. He gave us just one more chance to make the wrongs in our lives right. He gave one more chance to get ourselves ready for heaven. We're thankful to him for his grace and his mercy that has brought us to this point. You could have chosen to be in another place, but we're glad that you have taken the time to be here to worship the Almighty God in spirit and in truth. I know where some of us have been. I know what we have been through. But thank God we're at this place 
so that he can make us into what he really wants us to be. I must say thanks to those who prayed for us on last week. We had a safe trip and it was a, a great week. It was just a, a blessing to share in that lectureship. And um, the things that happened on the week, I learned so much. I think I'm a better person because of being there. I am a little stronger than I was on, on the week before because God showed up at the lectureship. He did show up at the lectureship. God has been good. And I just want to, to say thanks to the brethren here and especially Brother Turnquist and Brother Aaron Amen. for a job well done. Amen. I must tell you that they represented us well. Amen. OCTN was on show. All right. OCTN blew their minds. Okay. I'm serious. I'm not exaggerating. I'm, not, I'm telling you, OCTN blew their minds. They, they didn't expect it. They didn't know what they didn't know what to expect. They have never seen this before. This lectureship has been going on for 42 years. And it's the first time in 42 years that they have had something like this. There were people who could not be able to make it in the sessions because they had to be at registration, in the nurses' station, in the, in the vendors' area, all that. But they were able to see everything live. Over the week, we got... For the entire week, I think we got 900 and maybe 50-something viewers wow. on, on, on watching the lectureship on OCTN. And I just want you to pray for us, support the team. I, I'm just plugging this. I know I'm, I know I'm here to preach, but I need to let you know. Support the team. We have, we have, got, we have actually got bookings for next year already. A youth conference. There's a major youth conference that's going to be taking place in Atlanta, Georgia. And OCTN has already been booked for that youth conference. And that, that's how that's how that's what the blessing that comes about from, from all of that. You know, so just pray for them. Pray, pray that the, the program will be supported. And uh, we have had preachers who approach um, us and to say, you know, we want to partner with you guys, we want to to help. You know, so so that's gonna be a blessing. You know, that's gonna be a blessing. This is this is something new and refreshing for the church, and I think you know, and I think Brother Turnquist has has um you know stuck to it. He could have been discouraged because of lack of support. He stuck with it. He he decided that this is what he wants to do. This is this is his vision. And let me tell you something: it's gonna pay dividends in the long run. So we just want to continue to pray for him and for. Um, what happened? Uh, John chapter number nine is my text. John chapter nine is my text. He sweet, I know. He is so sweet, I know. You know the storm clouds may rise. Yeah, and the strong winds may blow, but I, I'll tell the world where, where, where I go that I found the same Savior and He. If you believe it, just sing it one more time with me. He's sweet, I know. Oh, he is so sweet, I know. You know those storm clouds may rise. You and the strong winds they blow, but I, I'll tell the world anywhere I go that I found the 
blessed Savior and here sweet I know. Amen. John chapter 9. On last week during the lectureship, I heard two great messages from this particular passage. This is a sermon that I've preached before on years ago. And I thought about it during the week while I, I was hearing those lessons. And you know what is amazing, church? That the, the two lessons that I heard from this text didn't come across the same way. Amen. <laughs> it's amazing. And I thought about the message that I preached, and I said, I need to preach this. You see, it's a third lesson from this text that's not going to come across the same way. But I want to, I want to talk to you from the, the subject. There is mud in your eyes. There is, there is mud in your eyes. Jesus met a blind man. The Bible says he was blind from birth. And of course, the, the question of retribution came up. Who did sin? Is this man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus dispelled the notion of sin being involved in a person's condition. Sometimes we look at folk and we wonder why they are the way they are. And we draw our own conclusions. But in this case, Jesus dispelled the notion. And he says, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents. But this happened that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Sometimes you are where you are because God needs to work in you. And God needs to work through you. Are y'all still here with me? I'm taking my time this morning. If I fall asleep on the pulpit, please just wake me up. <laughs> but, 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 but sometimes God has to put you where you are. So that he can work in you and through you. So, so he says that neither this man nor his parents. But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And Jesus says, it's my time to work. Did you hear me? He says, it's my time to work. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can work. It's my time to work. Uh, when he had thus spoken, verse number six, he spat on the ground and he made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, go wash in the pool of Silo, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. There is mud in your eyes. And I want to just do a couple of things with this passage quickly and then take my seat. There is mud in your eyes. Num number one, let us, let us try to figure out what mud is and what it does. Because you see, it, 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 it tells me that, that, that mud is something. And the Bible says clay. Some translation says mud. It is, it is something that you and I are afraid of. Y'all didn't hear me. It is something that you and I are afraid of. When it, when it rains, you stay away from mud. Y'all with me? You, you, you will tell your children not to play in the... Y'all still here with me? Yeah, you will do whatever it takes to make sure that your driveway is properly paved and, and, and all that kinds of stuff because you don't want to encounter with the... Okay. Amen, somebody. I'll see where I'm going this morning. So, but, but Jesus used stuff 
that we're afraid of to help us to see him. Mm-hmm. Y'all, 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 y'all wake up a little bit this morning. Wake up a little bit. I know it's gloomy on the outside, but wake up a little bit. Jesus often used stuff that we're afraid of to help us to see him. And in this case, the Bible says that, that he used spit. Mm. Yeah, y'all, y'all just imagine somebody using spit on your face. Lord have mercy. But, but, but Jesus used spit. But you, you know something, church? There is, there's one thing I know about Jesus. He could have looked at the blind man and he could have said go and see again he could have looked at the blind man and he could have said go your way your eyes are open he could have looked at the blind man and he could have just touched him and said open your eyes and all of that would have been done at the command of the savior but look at what he did the bible says that when he saw him the first thing that Jesus did was he spat on the ground. He mixed the spit with the dirt and he made some mud. Watch me, church. Mud is what we're afraid of. Mud is what we stay away from. But Jesus made mud and then what he did with the mud, he put it on his eyes. Let me, let me tell you what mud does when it gets to the eye. It irritates. Ha. Y'all, 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 y'all didn't hear me. I said it irritates. Because you see, church, when it gets in the eyes, it irritates. Whether you're blind or you can see, if it gets in, it begins to irritate you. Yeah, so you, you have to scratch and, and rub and, and all kinds of stuff. And, and, and somebody will look at you when stuff gets and wonder if you're smoking something. Because your eyes get red. And, 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 and often we're told to get under the water and wash it and all kinds of stuff. But the point I'm trying to make, church, is that mud serves to irritate the eye. And, and the word irritate... Church means to annoy, to vex, to make angry, to exasperate, to antagonize, to cause discomfort. Y- y- y'all see here with me? I- I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Imagine, church, imagine the, 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 the mud in the blind man's eyes. Hmm. I-, I want you to see the picture I'm trying to paint. Imagine the mud in the blind man's eyes. I believe it was annoying. Mm -hmm. I believe it was irritating. I believe that it causes him some discomfort. Watch me. Because you got to understand, church, that I don't know what was happening with his eyes if it was closed down or open. But for some reason, this blind man had a problem that he needed to get rid of. This blind man had a situation he needed to get rid of. And sometimes, church, what God puts in us in order to get us to see is what's going to annoy us. It's what's going to irritate us. It's what's going to cause us discomfort. But it's there not because he's bitter against us, but he wants us to be better in those situations. Watch me. Watch me. Because you see, he says, he puts it on his eyes. Well, not only was it irritating, but I want you to understand the mess on his face. Mm -hmm. Did you all see that? The mess on his face. So when Jesus spat on the ground and he mixed the dirt with the spit, it creates a mess. Hello. Yeah. But somebody said, why couldn't Jesus have just done it a more simpler way than doing all that kinds of stuff? But Jesus have to use some stuff 
to shape us into what he wants us to be. Don't, 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 don't lose me, church, because you see, understand something, that, 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 that oftentimes we go through some things. And you say, I am in a bad situation. But something comes up that makes my bad situation worse. Ha! Have you ever thought about it? My, my bad situation just got worse. It's nothing that I bargained for. But I try to serve God. I try to do right. But my bad situation just become worse. I try to do right. I, I'm doing what I am. And I've been asking God to help me. To get out of my bad situation. But my bad situation just got Y'all yeah, yeah, sit with me, church. My bad situation just got worse. Well, I was already blind. But now, the man that's trying to help me with my blindness just muddied up my eyes. Just caused me to get discomfort. So my bad situation of being blind just got Y'all are still with me. Just got worse. So here is it, church. What mud will do. It irritates the eyes just by feeling it. But I want you to understand. I want you to understand. That look at this blind man. Jesus said to him. After he placed the mud on his eyes. Go wash. Ha. Go wash. Well, number two, let me show you that the mud was never meant to stay. Y'all wow. didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all 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 miss y'all miss it this morning. I said the mud was never meant to stay. Ha. While it's irritating. While it's annoying, while it's messy, while it causes discomfort, church, it's never meant to stay. When Jesus applied it, he never meant for it to stay on the blind, man, blind man's eyes. And that's why he said to him, go wash. Watch me. Why did Jesus use mud? Why did Jesus allow him to go? Because you see, church, mud, in this case, your situation, whatever it is that you think is causing you to get worse, is just there to help you get better. Okay. Brother Jackson, get me a couple of passages quickly. First Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4. And I'm, I'm going to tell you that it's, it was never meant to stay. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 12 and 13. The Bible says, let me hear it. Love. Beloved. Think it not. Lord have mercy. Some of you act in surprise when stuff happen in your life. Hello, hello, somebody. So, some of you act in surprise when stuff happen in your life. The Bible says, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery, concerning the fiery trial. Which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened unto you. Read. But rejoice. In as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. That when his glory shall be revealed. You may be glad also. With exceeding joy. Understand that your suffering is partaking in Christ's suffering and you're going to be glad as a result of it. Amen. Did you all hear that? Amen. I said you're going to be glad as a result of it. I'm going to show you how this blind man rejoice because of the mud uh -huh. ha, that made his bad situation worse. What's going to get better? Y'all yeah, 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 sit here with me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just going to get better. Yeah. He says rejoice because you are partaking in the suffering of Jesus Christ. And as a result of that, you're going to be glad as a result of it. Yeah. Right. First Peter 1, 7. Let me hear it quickly. 
First Peter 1 Peter 1.7. The Bible says, read. That the trial of your faith, being much more, being precious, much more precious than, of gold, than of gold that perish, though it be tried, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and, honor and, glory. and glory. Watch me, church. You see, when you have been through what you have been through and God brought you through it, it's time that you begin to give him honor, praise, and glory. Because you see, you, you've been tried. In order for you to look good, you got to go through some trials. In order for you to see, you got to go through some trials. In order for God to bless you, you got to go through some trials. This blind man was going through his and thought he was in a worse situation than where he was. But I told you, it was never meant to stay. Jesus says, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Your irritants. Listen church. Your irritants. Your troubles. Y'all still with me? Don't, don't miss this. Your irritants. Your troubles. Your trials. Your storms. Hello? None of these are meant to stay. We read in Psalm 30 and verse number 5. I want you to read that. We know it. But I want you to read it. Can y'all hear? You heard me? I said your irritants. Your troubles, your trials, your storms are never meant to stay. Amen. Psalm 30 and verse number 5. The Bible says, For his anger endureth, for his anger endureth but for a moment. Yeah. In his favor, in his favor is, life. is life. Weeping Lord have mercy, weeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heard me, church. Did I tell you it was never meant to stay? Y'all, 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 y'all looking mighty quiet on me this morning. Did, did I tell you it was never meant to stay? For the Bible says what? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I tell you, it's not meant to stay. Your storms are going to be over. Your troubles are going to be over. Your trials are going to be over. I said stay with God. And your troubles will be over. They were never meant to stay. That's why he says go. Go wash. Go wash in the pool. Asylum. Psalm 34. Brother Jackson. Psalm 34 and 19. I want to hear this one too. Psalm 34 19. The Bible says. Many. Are the afflictions of the righteous. But the. Yeah, 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 I did hear it. Yeah, I did hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is your moment, church. This is your moment, church. You see, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but, but the Lord delivers deli mm, Come on, church. But the Lord delivers them out of them all. They were never meant to stay. They were never meant to stay. But watch me as we go in the text now. Look, look, look at the text. Because you see, uh, John chapter 9, the blind man Jesus says, Go wash. Now, now, learn something of the blind man. Number one, he was born blind. So, so he tells me, church, that by himself, he couldn't find the pool to wash. Y'all yeah, 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 missed that, y'all missed that, y'all missed that. I, I said by himself, he couldn't find the pool to wash. But Jesus, church, listen, wasn't concerned about how. I didn't hear me. I said Jesus wasn't concerned about how he was going to get to the pool. His concern was that you get to the pool. Sometimes church you feel, oh Lord have mercy. I want you to understand, I want you to understand that by yourself you can't get out of your situation. Every now and then we need some help. Every now and then we need somebody to hold our hands and walk us to our destination. Y'all look at me funny. Some of, sometimes, church, we need somebody to help us. I don't know who helped this blind man. But I know Jesus wasn't much concerned about how he got there. The instruction was get there. Go wash. 
Yeah, 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 go wash. You see, sometimes Jesus tells us to do some things and we find it hard. Yeah. And we wonder why our blessings are not coming. You wonder why we're stuck well, in a rut. Well, Hello, church. Because Jesus tells us to do some things and we find it hard. And we're not willing to get help well, to get to where he wants us to be. We're not willing to take the help that's been offered to get us to where we want to be. I don't know how the blind man got there, but he had to get there anyhow. Because if he didn't wash, as much as God put the mud in his eyes. If he didn't wash, he would still remain blind. Y'all remember Naaman? Second Kings chapter number 5 and verse 17, I think it is. Y'all remember Naaman? When the Bible says that Naaman had leprosy. And, and, and God, uh, uh, then the, the man of God went to Naaman and says, go wash in Jordan. Uh, go wash in Jordan. Seven times. And the Bible says, listen, the Bible says, church, that uh, 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 Naaman... When he got to the, the house of the prophet, the man of God, he said, Ah, I thought. And sometimes we trying to think for God. Yeah. That's why we're still in our situation. Come on, church, you gotta help me. I said, sometimes we try to think for God. We gotta stop thinking for God and just do what God asks us to do so that we can get out of our situation, that we can come out seeing instead of still being blind. And, and so, and so name and name and said, I thought, I thought, hello church, I thought that the prophet would just come out and I would just wave his hand over me and, and I would be cleansed. Wow. But the instruction is go wash seven times in Jordan. I don't care how you get to Jordan, go to Jordan. Hello church, I don't care who lead you to Jordan, go to Jordan. Amen. And so go to Jordan, that's the instruction. And until Naaman went to Jordan to wash, he was still a leper. And you know what is interesting, church? That one of his, his servants said to him, Master, if, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, you would have done it. That's the time he started thinking. Sometimes we just need somebody to remind us. Say amen when you can. I said sometimes we just need somebody to remind us of what God says we ought to do. To get to where he wants us to go. And so, so Naaman went and washed. And the Bible says immediately his skin became clean. But I'm trying to tell you that Jesus wasn't concerned about how he got there. Because sometimes we need some help. Hello church. I said we need some help. Christians, stop trying to make it on your own. Y'all didn't hear me. I said stop trying to make it on your own. There's mud in your eyes. Hello, 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 hello. I said there's mud in your eyes, so stop trying to make it on your own. Where you want to go, you can't see. Brethren, let me, let me instruct you. Surround yourself with people who can see. Y'all yeah, yeah, didn't hear me, y'all didn't hear me. I said surround yourselves with people who can see because there's mud in our eyes and we need some help to get to the place where we can see surround yourselves with people who can see and i'm not talking about uh seeing physically I am talking about people who can see spiritually. For the Bible reminds us that if the blind lead the blind, both will fall in the ditch. Surround yourselves with people who can see. Watch me, because you're going to need help every now and then. There's a story in the Bible, and I want you to get there with my brother Jackson. I want to show you something. There's a, there's a story in the Bible in Exodus chapter number 17. Ah, Exodus Chapter 17 and the verse is number 11 when, when God said to Moses uh, after Israel was dying like fly. God said to Moses go to the top of the mountain. Stretch your hands out. And as long as your hand is outstretched Israel will prevail. But if, if your hand falls any then Amalek will prevail. 
Y'all yeah, yeah, see where I'm going, church? Y'all yeah, see where I'm going, church? Because I tell you, every now and then we need some help to get us to where God wants us to be. Every now and then we need some help, you see, to get us to what God wants us to do. And the Bible says that he stretched out his hand. And every time that his hand fell, Amalek prevailed. But as long as his hand was outstretched, Israel prevail. God wasn't concerned about how Moses' hand was going to get there. God knew that at some point, having hold your hand up this high, it's going to get tired. Y'all, 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 didn't hear me. I said, as long as he hold his hand like this, he's going to get tired. God didn't care. He didn't concern about how his hand was going to stay up. But as long as his hand falls, Israel was going to die. Yes. Y'all, 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 stay with me. But look at the text, look at the text. Look at verse number seven, 11. Look at verse number 11. Let read, read. And it came to pass when Moses held, when Moses up, held up his hands that Israel prevailed. That Israel prevailed. Read. And when, he let down his hand, when he's let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Amalek prevailed. Read. When Moses but Moses' hand was heavy. In other words, he was tired. Yes. Y'all, y'all, y'all with me, church. He was tired. Read. And they took stones. They took stones. Oh. Lord of mercy. You see, God used some stuff to help us to get to where he wants us to be. And the Bible says they used some stones. And put it under him. So you see, let, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me, use your foot. So you see, they took some stones and they put it under him. They caused Moses to sit down. Are you here with me, church? Read, Brother Jackson. And Aaron and her. Stay, you see, one was on this side and the other was on this side and they held it up. They held it up. You see, God wasn't concerned about how his hand was held up as long as his hand stayed up. As long as his hand stayed up. And guess what happened? Israel prevailed. Israel prevailed. So when God said, when Jesus said to the blind man, go wash, he didn't care how he was going to get there. He knew he got to get to the pool of Siloam. It wasn't meant to stay. Because there is a chance now, church, for you to get rid of what irritates you. Get rid of what annoys you. Get rid of what caused you discomfort. Because now you're going to follow the instruction of Jesus Christ. Surround yourself with people who see spiritually. Watch me. Because you see Moses and Aaron and Ur with him. They knew what it needed to take. Christians, we need to understand that people who see physically don't necessarily see spiritually. For the Christian, we walk by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. You got to learn how to to follow God's instruction. And then the Bible says the blind man, he got to the pool. He got to the pool. Still don't know how he got there. Still don't know how he got there. But we know he got to the pool. And sometimes church, we don't know how we get here. Hello, hello, hello. And sometimes you don't know how you're getting there. But God's going to send somebody to help you get there. Hello church, sometimes you can't see your way there. But God's going to help send somebody to help you to get there. Yeah, I, I don't know how I got here, but I got here anyway. Sometimes God has to move some stuff out of your way for you to get here. But you get here anyway. Sometimes you have to make some decision to tell the devil, you're a liar and I'm going to get there anyway. God knows how to get you there and he's going to use somebody. He's going to use some stuff to get you here. The blind man got to the, the pool. And the Bible says he followed the instructions and he, he washed. He washed. Y'all heard me? I said he washed. Let me tell you something, church, as I go to my seat. Learn how to trust the word. Learn how to trust the word. Now, 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 look at this. Look at this. Effort is demanded on your part. Yes. When God speaks the word, yes. he expects you to move. Yes. Amen. Some effort is demanded 
on your part. I told you Jesus could have just said, open your eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But instead he wanted the blind man to act on his own faith. You have to make some effort in order to receive your blessings. Naaman, I told you, had to make some effort to receive his blessing. By going down to Jordan to wash. The blind man had to make some effort by going to the pool of Siloam. Don't you sit here thinking that God's going to work it out for me and I do nothing. You got to make some effort. Because some of us sit down every day. We come to church and we, we just sit down. We sing and we pray and we think that's all that there is. Effort is demanded on your part. We need to learn how to trust the word of God. Have you been trusting God's word? Because you see there's mud in your eyes and you need to see. And without the word of God you can't see. Without the instructions of God you can't see. Without obedience to the word you can't see. Without trust in God you can't see. And some of us are still blind. Some of us are still blind. God has placed the mud in our eyes. But we fail to get up and go wash. And that is why we're still in the state that we're in. We must learn to trust the word. For the Bible says that when he went down, verse number 7, and he washed. You notice the Bible didn't just say when he went down. The Bible says when he went down and washed. Then he came back seeing. Church, do you want to see this morning? Do you want mud to be removed from your eyes? Go wash. Follow the instructions of Jesus. And as I go to my seat, we must learn how to trust the word. Trust the word that says if you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Trust the word that says draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Trust the word that says if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Trust the word that says if you suffer with him down here, you'll be glorified with him up there. Trust the word that said the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. Now, trust the word that says all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Trust the word that says though this outward man perish, the inward man is renewed every day. Learn to trust the word of God if we want to see. Learn to trust the word of God. He says go down to the pool of Silo and wash. There are some things in your life that's going to cause you discomfort. There are some things in your life that's going to irritate you. But I want you to know this morning, they were never meant to stay. And only if we just get up, do what God asks us to do, trust in his word, we're going to be better than we were yesterday if we just walk with him today. Amen. Every now and then I need a word that reminds me how to trust him. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. I says every now and then I need a word Amen. that reminds me that once I was blind, but now I can see. Every now I need a word that tells me that he still loves me and he still cares for me. And I want you to know this morning that if you're not a Christian. Or if you have not been living up to your Christian responsibility. There's mud in your eyes. And you need to see. But the only way we're going to see is when we come to Jesus and do what he asks us to do. If you're here this morning. You're not a Christian. He says come believing. Come repenting. Come confessing that sweetest name on mortal tongue. And be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. If you're a Christian but you have not been living up to your Christian responsibility. And that mud remains in your eye irritating you. He says come. Because I want to send you somewhere that you can go wash. So you can see again. Be like the blind man. When he washed and he saw. And when the people saw him. They started questioning. Isn't this the same man that sat and begged? Wasn't this the man who was born blind? And everywhere he went, they were questioning. And the blind man says, listen, I don't know. I don't know much. But one thing I know, I was blind. But now I see. I don't know much of what took place. But one thing I know, there's a man called Jesus who touched my eyes with mud, sent me to wash, and now I can see. Even when they went to his parents, and they said to his parents, is this your son? What happened? Parents says he's of age. I asked him. When they went to him, he says, I don't know. But one thing I know, I was blind. But now I see. If you have a confession, 
That once you were blind, if you have a testimony, it means that you have been through a test. Amen. Once I was blind, but now I can see. You can get rid of the mud in your eyes as together we stand and as we sing.